God is good. God is good all the time. You ever heard that said by Christians, especially in church? Maybe sometime the pastor would say God is good and the people would respond with all the time. Well, welcome to Grace with Paul Gray. We're going to talk a little bit about that concept today. Goodness, even in the Bible, when it referred to people or animals or a harvest or different things like that, it's arbitrary. It's in the eyes of, of the beholder. Somebody might say, boy, I have a really good cat. And somebody else might say, there's no such thing as a good cat. I hate cats. Somebody might say, well, we had a really good harvest this year. We got 10 bushels to the acre. And somebody else who's always used to getting 30 or 40 bushels to the acre might say, well, <laughs> 10 bushels to the acre is not good to me. So it's, it's uh, something that um, has to do with the eyes of the beholder, goodness. Generally in the Bible, it meant agreeable and pleasant, especially in the area of beneficent, in giving, somebody giving or providing for somebody else. That's when it referred to people. However, in the Bible, anytime the word good was used with God, it always had a theological implication. Theologically, it meant that God is completely and totally moral and spiritually good. God is good because God is morally perfect and gloriously generous. That's what the Bible translation books say. Only God is pure goodness. One time the rich young ruler came to Jesus and he wanted eternal life. And he said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, why do you call me good? And there are a lot of different thoughts on why he said that. But Jesus went on to say, only one is good. That's the Father. All right. When we talk about God's goodness, first of all, that's what God is. God is love, and God is goodness. Now, this is not a theological lesson today. This is something that has total and complete application in our life, and I'm going to show you that, so hang with me for a minute. Psalm 100, verse 5, the NIV says, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And many uh, other translations say God's love endures forever. Well, what do you think of when you think of endure? Generally, that means you put up with something that's not particularly pleasant, but you just endure it anyway. Well, you might have guessed that in the original text, <laughs> the word endure is not there. The Lord is good. His love endures is forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. The Passion Translation puts it this way, the Lord is always good and ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you, so kind that it will astound you, and he is famous for his faithfulness toward all people. Everyone knows our God can be trusted, for he keeps his promises to every generation. Now, what I want you to think about, we're going to talk about that in the next few days too, is what does it mean that God is good, he is love, his mercy endure, not, I'm not going to say that, his mercy lasts forever, and that he can be trusted. To me, it means as uh, John and Paul later wrote, there's nothing bad about good. James wrote, there, there's no darkness, there's no shadow of turning, there's no evil, there's nothing bad in God. So what is, where does that uh, affect us? How does that affect us in our daily life? That lets us, that completely does away with the lying mindset that some religion has foisted off on us that well, God has caused me to have this cancer because he's teaching me something. Or God wanted my business to fail so he could teach me something. Or God wanted my marriage to not work because he's teaching me something. That's not good. God is not like that. 
everything good comes from God, and anything that is not good comes from somewhere else, not from God. And God is good forever for everyone. We're going to talk some more about that this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.